the thought that was strong on my heart is the fact that um, what God has called us to do is to team up with him in building. And this morning I want everyone that is um, a headship minister to have a sense of fear, holy fear of the danger of building what God is not building. And um, as I look at everybody, I see that um, we will carry various degrees of um, culpability and various degrees of um, reward when we stand before the master, depending on your level of knowledge and calling and placement. So must do that work with a sense of that consciousness. I don't want to call it fear, but fear is a good word, not negative fear. Paul referred to it as a trembling with a fear not of the devil, but of God and having a part in the work of God and knowing that um, there have been buildings that men did for God that God did not accept and that our own part in this work will be acceptable. And so I want to share a little bit this morning to help us, those that are involved in the building at various end. What we are doing, talking about the work of the ministry is recruiting you into that labor force. And I want you to look at um, the book of Psalm 127 and verse one. The scripture says, except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman, wicked but in vain. Now that house could mean different things to people. It could be your physical house. It could be the family. But in the context of this is the program of God that uh, is doing on the earth that we are a part of and we are involved in. And when you have that understanding, it will put a holy caution upon your spirit not to jump or rush. And I seem to have um, a view of um, how sometimes our work can be amusing to God or irritating to him many times. And um, I pray it doesn't make him angry. If he's amusing him, okay. If he's irritating, a bit dangerous, but if he's making him angry, that's very dangerous. And um, and God gives me pictures of it. And so I apply it to myself that God don't let me be like that. Do you understand? Uh, and that's why many times Christians get in trouble church members, and then Christians, leaders, and all that. Let me start with the example of um, sometimes the choir want to join me to sing in our own ministry here. So I see that picture regularly. Okay? Uh, because sometimes there are some people in the choir that have concluded in their heart that daddy does not know how to sing. Now, I'm not talking about you. Right? I'm talking about people in the choir. So they've made that conclusion. So they have assumed a role of singing that song in a way that I don't want. You know, I, I'm, I'm singing, I'm, I'm raising a song from my spirit to help to do the work. Sometimes the Holy Ghost gives a song and the message is going to come out of that song. 
And then there's a way the song will be sung that will affect the atmosphere. So sometimes they take over the song. Are you following what I'm saying? And over the years, maybe mommy has um, learned that and she does it very well. That, um, For example, I came up, I had said that they should do worship till 8.30 this morning. So when I came in, I was just following the songs and um, when the um, song leader, what was the song that you raised when I came up? Yeah. Glory, glory. Is that? Glory to... No, it was not a song. Father in heaven, I will love you. That was a song that I came up to sing. Is that? You should know the song that I joined, I came up with. Glory, glory. Glory, okay. Now, when was when was singing the song, I was singing, and then that song, because I knew that song was from the Holy Spirit. That was the Holy Spirit song. Now. That was very accurate. In the Spirit. So I just, I sang it from my heart before they started singing it. So I just came up. Now, okay, this is um, time for me to come up. And um, so what we are doing is not really our effort that is as important as our accuracy. So when, we, when we're working with God, you must know the things that matter to heaven. It's not our effort. It is our accuracy. Sometimes being accurate will mean do nothing. But our nature as human beings wants to do something all the time. Sometimes God can tell you and say, son, don't do anything. Just take a break. Rest. But if you are used to doing something that gives you a sense that you, you must be involved and all that. So it's important. So when they, when they got that, I came up with that. And um, so I, I've seen that many, many times. Are you following what I'm saying? And when I'm using these examples, I'm just trying to help you to understand that everyone, we are in a perpetual school of learning accuracy with God. I don't think anybody is going to graduate from that. What you should pray for is that your degree of missing it will be reducing as you are going on and on. Is that okay? Only Jesus, our master, never missed it at all. Got everything perfect. You know, so when I, when I came into the auditorium, for example, this morning, I was getting my things ready. I knew what I was going to take, do at the set men's workshop. And then for this meeting, I knew God want, wanted to do some things. Uh, first is the worship that we did, okay? And then, because it was not in my intention to come until 10 o'clock, you know? I said, 10 o'clock, I'll come. But then, at 7 o'clock, uh, Peace called mommy, and um, mommy was still sleeping. So I said, "Oh, maybe call back by eight. He said, "She said, I don't. Times you are not going to be present for the workshop for the men, for the um, set men." I said, um, "Not likely." But then I knew in my spirit I should get up now and get ready. So I see that God was shifting things in the spirit. This is how to go. So I'm following that direction as I'm coming to get to know what, because you see, the, what we are doing is not our work. It is his work. The reward that we're going to get is not the labor that we did. It is the contribution that we made to what he's doing. You could have worked very hard all your life and it had nothing to do with what he's doing. Kenneth Hickin said something in one of his books. He said there are many of the servants of God that lived and died without entering the first phase of his plan for them. They just lived and, and they did ministry. And nothing they did entered the first phase of God's plan for them. So I can imagine what they are going to get when they get to heaven. And yet, over here, we may have been celebrating them that they labored well and all that. So I was, I was coming and I came in. And then I was getting the notes that I was going to use and everything. And um, 
So, because when God, when God is working with me to get me to do his work, there are things that he leads me to study that um, I just study them and I may not preach them for five years. Some three years, some, but I have all my notes. And I sometimes say, okay, take this note. And what I'm going to teach is going to be from the note. And, um, and sometimes I have a 10 point and it starts me on one point. God, the, word, the word of God is not for information, it is to do a work. And those of us that were handling the word must know that. We are not secondary school teachers that are just supplying information. We are training believers to enter into their own place in God's program. So understanding and duplication is the focus. So anyway, when I came into the auditorium, I was still talking about that example of him. We must find our accuracy to work with him. So I got in my, I was getting the notes I was going to take up to the pulpit. Okay, I'm deciding which notes I'm going to use and all that. And in my protocol, grabbed all my notes that I put there and they carried it to the pulpit. So I got that sat down because the Holy Ghost was laughing inside himself. So I was laughing myself, I was looking at them. Because they didn't even know the, the notes I'm going to use. But I was work. So I needed my phone. And I brought my phone here. So I said, where's my phone? And then they told me, it's up there. So I said, bring it back. So now, you know, sometimes our work is like that. Amen. Whatever you are doing, however they place you. For those of us that we are set men, our own degree of accuracy must be higher because we are going to be placing men on behalf of God in places that their journey on the earth will affect their reward in eternity. And then for those of you that you are on that section, you must enter into an accuracy to know Two people succeeded very well in that placement, yieldedness. Isaac was the first picture of the sacrifice on the altar that didn't struggle when Abraham took Isaac and bound him and laid him on the altar. He could run away because Abraham was an old man and Isaac was a viral young man. He could refuse, but he submitted himself to the father. And what he's saying is that I trust you and what you are doing with me is what is best for me. And that was the first picture of Jesus Christ on the cross. He could come down from the cross at any time. When they came to arrest him, he said, don't you know I could call six legions of angels to come and I can walk. In fact, when they came to arrest him, he said, who are you looking for? They fell under the anointing. And he waited for them to recover. Now at that time, if I was one of the soldiers, I would be prostrated. They didn't read the Bible. If they read the Old Testament, they should have known that this is greater than Elijah and the soldiers then. And they still arrested a man that waited for them to recover. You know, the, the stupidity of the human brain when it's confronting divine wisdom is alarming. That you see men that assume that they know more than God. And they want to teach God. They want to help God. And as we go towards the end of the age, we will have that more and more. From the world it will come. Because I will show you a little bit that there are two systems in the world. There is a system of the world and there is a system of the kingdom. And they are conflicting. And as we go towards the end of the age and the time that Jesus is going to come back, the system of the world wants to take over the kingdom of God on the earth to stop the program of God because the system of the world is headed up in Satan. It manifests in different names that you call it civilization, progress, and things like that, and whatever. And it makes the people of God to think that, well, God is a cake. That was why they put the Ark of the Covenant on a cart when they were bringing it from the land of the Philistines. And God was angry at them. There was, there was violation of his. So he said they should put it on the shoulders of men. 
but they felt that this is how the Philistines were carrying their own idols. Why can't we modernize it? The point is that spirituality is not backward. It is ahead of modernity. But we now want to modernize what is ahead of us. And that's our problem. Are you following what I'm saying? So, and um, <laughs> we see this situation come up over and over and over and over and over again. So you must pray. I must pray. We must. We are finishing, finishing the school of ministry today. My prayer is that this will have contributed to what God is doing. Okay? Each person will find out and know what God wants to do with them and all that. And then that you take something that will help you to do what God is. And what you are doing must be part of what God is doing. Do you understand? So each person must find that. So if, if you find yourself in that place of accuracy, that this person should be here doing this, doing that. God doesn't ask our opinion about how we want him to place us. No. He's the one that knows where we fit. The Bible says he has set the members of the body as he wills. And if you want to change that, you are telling him that he made a mistake. And you are telling him that you are stronger than him, you are worse than him. And you live in a perpetual conflict. The only person in the universe that God planned to be in unending battle is the devil. Because from time that rebelled against God, he is in unending spirit warfare. He thinks he has conquered now. Another generation comes up till his final judgment. He will keep on being that. And God didn't plan that for us as his children. So we must come to that place of rest. Rest is not idleness. Rest is staying in that place that my God knows what he's doing. With me, I've seen people that have done all kinds of things down through the years in ministry to get me to do things the way they think I should do it. And so many people have an idea of how you should do the work of the ministry. Because what God is working in our lives is a work of accuracy. Maturity in Christianity is not measured in more attendance in church. It is measured in accuracy with God. In shaping your spirit, your nature, to be much more accurate. And working on your will to be more yielded to that accuracy. It is one thing to find what is in the accuracy of God for you. It's another thing entirely to yield to it. Especially when it is not convenient that this is... Um, the will of God for me and all that and things like that. Are you following what I'm saying? Praise God. Because when I look at my own journey in ministry and then standing in the place that I am now, I'm praying that um, God help me to help his people, place them well and do different things. And then I look at people that are in the ministry one thing that maybe some people have done well is that they have not gone. Is that okay? But that they have stayed around. And then it becomes a, 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 a walk also that um, if, if 10 years ago, this person got to this point, with Pastor Jaibo was talking as the people that have to repeat a class. And you know, for example, if there is a secondary school that they've... Um, the, the senior prefect in the secondary school in Form 5 failed work and he has to repeat work. They are not likely to make him the senior prefect for the next set. They are going to bring a junior who is in the current set to be the senior prefect, but he's still in school. Now, so you have an ex-senior prefect and a current senior prefect. How it will function is going to affect a lot of things. And I, many pastors will understand what I'm saying in the spiritual context. That then that's where issues come up. But you see, everything that we're doing, and the Lord gives me some statements that um, lead to messages that whatever you are doing in the kingdom is never between you and a, and a man, whoever, whether a man that God is using or a man that whatever, it is between you, God, and your future. And that should be something that you write in bold letters. 
that it is between you, God, and your future. The person that is involved is just a tool or an instrument. Is that okay? That is fitting you for your program. In God. You are always in God's hand, except you take yourself out of God's hand. And so you must have that mindset and that attitude like um, Isaac had, that the father wanted him like this, that Lord Jesus Christ won, that did, he, he, he knew this is the father's will. He prayed in the garden of Gethsemane that the father should free him from going to the cross. And the father said no. And three times he asked for that and was not granted. So and he submitted, not as I will, but as you will. I must come to that place. That when you, when you, when you want something that is not what God wants for you, then you should bow to him and say, this is going to be, and then you flow with that. I hope you have followed what I'm saying. But that's a difficult thing for us to do, not to, to learn how to flow with that um, submission. You understand what I'm saying? So when people now find themselves in that situation and say, this is how God wants it. And I remember a member of the church years ago told me that he went somewhere and um, and he said, the way they honored him and things like that. I said, well, praise God, maybe they need you. But I have a work to do in your life that does not require that. I hope you feel what I'm saying. You should be careful of people that don't know what God is doing with you. That we spoil what God is doing in your life. And that, that, that's where the conflict comes in because there are people that will offer you the world system and then there are people that will offer you the kingdom system. The kingdom system call you to disappear. He must increase, I must reduce. That's the kingdom system. But the world system is you must increase, Christ must reduce. Your flesh must increase. The more fleshly you are, the more the world respond. Are you following what I'm saying? Praise God. You know, I've been, I've been places that people are shocked that I'm driving myself. I say, I like driving. Number one. All right, but you know, the world system is built around branding. I remember a brother that was going to be a bishop and somebody asked him and said, uh, when are you going to do your bishop? He said, just some few more steps to become a bishop. And say why? Because he said he needs to get about two more cars or something like that because he needs to have a convoy and needs to have certain things in place to... Now, so I looked at that statement and compared it with First Timothy chapter 3. Are you following what I'm saying? Another brother went to become a bishop because he went to a government office and he sat down and they didn't attend to him on time. They just kept passing people that know somebody, somebody that is high. And then a bishop came in with the regalia of a bishop. And they told the man inside, so let him come. So he saw that they gave him passive free pass. He said, eh, so I'm going to become a bishop. Now, I'm not, I don't want you to laugh. I'm just building a case for you now. Is that okay? And um, now he has become a bishop. But not the one that First Timothy 3 is talking about. Are you following what I'm saying? And um, some time ago, somebody came and asked me and said, um, when are you going to call the media to come and see what you are doing? I said, why? He said, so that people can know what you are doing. I said, I know what I'm doing. God knows what I'm doing. What is the problem of um, the world knowing what I'm doing? Are you following what I'm saying? And that's a world system which is going to confront the kingdom system as far as you are concerned. And the delay that many people have in being fitted into God's program is that many of us have imbibed the world system more than the kingdom system. The kingdom system is not palatable on the flesh of man, but it will develop and accelerate your spirit so high and so strong. 
And that's what you need to flow in accuracy. I hope you understand. I don't forget I'm talking about the fact that God is going to be working upon you, first of all, in accuracy. How to work, because he's the one that is doing the work. So I said, I give all those examples this morning to let you understand. And then now that's where the flesh comes in now. Do you get them? How do you know you have a problem? Is if the Holy Ghost corrects you. Because yes, the way Mumu was ministering and she was hammering on that strong word about them, wounded by correction and things like that. Now, the only way you can be wounded by somebody's correcting you is that you think you are better than the person correcting you. Are you following what I'm saying? Because there are many ways you respond to correction. Do you get what I'm saying? If that senior prefect that was former senior prefect and the new senior prefect conflict and the new senior prefect gave him some discipline, how do you think he's going to respond to it? You are my former junior. How can you be talking that way? But does it need it? Do you get what I'm saying? So that's, those are some certain things that you get big issues in. And why would you think that that correction is wrong? Is it a kingdom correction? And that's why we must not come into a place that we allow our mind. Before God will trust you, you must submit yourself to him. That it is you reducing Christ increasing. So when something comes, whether a message or a word and all that, and it is God that you see it as God that is doing that to me. So you are not reacting against that person, you are reacting against God. Are you following what I'm saying? And then because if sometimes we, we, we wonder as the message that's coming, if the, you can't, you shouldn't preach without God talking to you. That you seek God and seek God and seek God and seek God and seek God. And see God and get his mind for what he wants to do. And when that word comes, he doesn't have to palatable to us. God knows what he's doing. I remember years ago, I went to a day poly to have a student outreach. At, no, I think I went to preach for the campus fellowship there. Myself and mommy. And um, she was ministering one morning. And then she came out with a very strong message against abortion. It was a very strong, and she was hammering it so strong. So at the point I wrote a note to her, I said, now nah, this is a student meeting. Why are, you, why are you getting so much strong on this abortion issue? Okay. And um, she rounded up the meeting. And after the meeting, the, I think the president of fellowship came to see us and the sister's coordinator. The president of fellowship is the son of a pastor in town. And the sister's coordinator, they came. And the girl, they are, they are engaged together and they have been sleeping together and the girl had just gotten pregnant and yesterday the day before she got the pregnancy result and told the boy and the boy said you have to abort my father must not hear he will send me away it was in that context that they came to the meeting and it was in that context that the holy spirit was warning now see me now that is saying you shouldn't do that. Now, are we, which is the work of God? A nice message that will make them feel okay or stopping something that can destroy that girl. So it's possible for us to have church for years that the work of God is not done. And people are happy. And they are part of a Babylonian system. Because if, if the Lord put his survey map upon the church, we may be surprised how much percentage of what we are doing today is a part of his work. So the, the, the goal, my, own, my, my, my goal this morning is not to get you to be looking at any church and say, is this part of the work or it is your own part that I'm concerned with, it is my own part I'm concerned with. That whether somebody is going to respond to the work, if that girl that day I'm not sure whether they still went on to do it or whatever, but we delivered the message to them. Are you following what I'm saying? But if they did it, they have taken themselves out of gospel. Whatever consequence come up later is not between them and God, not between us and God. 
You must never let a case be between you and God. So you must be working towards accuracy with God yourself. At the placement that God placed all of us, those of us that were in the fivefold ministry offices, our own judgment is going to be based on our placement. So we must not be emotional. Do you get what I'm saying? We must not be. We must not be. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even the way we structure church and structure things, I'll give you some points this morning, but I want to get this across to you that it involves everybody. If Jesus did not cooperate with the Father, redemption will be on pause or stopped. If Isaac did not cooperate with Abraham, because God chose Isaac as a picture of Jesus Christ, he saw something in him and was using Abraham. If you look at Genesis 11, you will see Genesis 11, the Tower of Babel. And God destroyed in Genesis 11, stop what they were doing. And then in Genesis 12, we suddenly saw God calling Abraham out. So he's telling us that, look, this is the work of the devil in Genesis 11, and this is my work in Genesis 12. So we know that the work of God will always be connected to men, not committees.